Hey everybody, Dr. Chris here, and welcome to my channel. It's August 2018, and once again, NFL preseason is upon us. And although football has only been back for a very short time, Trubisky to throw, intercepted! It's picked off, Justin Simmons will return it. Already, there have been over 10 ACL injuries in the NFL this season thus far. Wow. With that in mind, we're gonna talk a little bit about ACL tears in general and how not to tear your ACL. Dr. Chris is seriously crazy for ACLs. What is an ACL tear, you ask? Well, an ACL tear is a tear of the anterior cruciate ligament. The ACL is one of four ligaments that are situated inside of your knee. So what does the ACL do? The ACL stops your femur, i.e. your thigh bone, from falling off of your tibia, i.e. your shin bone. How do you tear the ACL, you ask? Well, there are two mechanisms. One is a contact mechanism by being struck on the outside part of your knee while your knee is in flexion. The other is a non-contact mechanism. Do you even need the ACL? That's a good question. If you want to just run straight and do no direction change, no deceleration, and no popping or jumping, then you can probably get by without it. However, if you want to do any of those things, you need an ACL. How do you know if you've torn the ACL? You need a healthcare professional to help you with that diagnosis. However, there are some clues that may indicate that you've suffered an ACL injury, such as painful swelling of the knee, instability of the knee, inability to jump, pivot, or change direction without pain or giving way. So what brings you to see me today? It's my knee, dog. It's so swollen and unstable, I can't jump, pivot, or change direction without pain. So what should you do if you suffered an ACL injury or you think you suffered an ACL injury? You should go see a medical professional. What'd you say? Preferably an orthopedic surgeon. They'll obtain from you a detailed history, they'll perform a physical examination, and they'll send you for imaging studies to corroborate the diagnosis. So what are the treatment options for the ACL if you've torn it? The treatment options depend on the severity of the injury that you've suffered. Non-operative treatments include physiotherapy and bracing, while operative treatments include ACL reconstruction and ACL repair. What are the graft choices that are available for you if you decide to have an ACL reconstruction? The most common graft choices are the hamstring tendons, semitendinosus and gracilis, or the patellar tendon. One of the newer graft choices is the quadricep tendon. Now, all three of those are autograft. In other words, meaning those are graft choices that come directly from your body. There's also allograft, which means that it comes from a donor. If you'd like me to repeat what I just said in plain English. In order to fix the ACL, you need to attach the thigh bone to the shin bone. In order to do that, we need to get some material with which to attach those two bones. Let's see if I can get this. For more information on graft choices, you can check out this video from my friend Howard. So your knee is unstable and you've decided with your surgeon to have an ACL reconstruction. What graft are you going to choose? Which talks in detail about the graft choices. So how long should recovery take after an ACL injury anyway? Well, everybody thinks they're Adrian Peterson. <laughs> uh. And everybody thinks that they're going to come back from an ACL injury after only four and a half months. But! I mean, come on, man. <laughs> Most people take 9 to 12 months, and in fact, current studies are showing us that it may take even 1 to 2 years for people to rehabilitate properly after an ACL injury. So how do you know that you're ready to return to sport or activity after an ACL reconstruction? Before, we used to tell people that it was a time-based criteria. However, current studies are showing us more and more that criterion-based metrics are best suited to determine whether an athlete is able to return to sport. Tools such as the Melbourne 2.0 Return to Sport Guideline are suitable for this purpose. So what exactly does the future hold for you if you've torn your ACL? Studies show us that there will be a slight increase in the chance of you developing osteoarthritis in that joint in the future. If all goes well after your physiotherapy or your reconstruction, most people will be able to return to sport at the same level for which they were playing before. Most people will be able to carry out the day-to-day -day function without pain or instability. A small percentage of people who have suffered an ACL tear or ACL reconstruction will go on to require additional surgery such as a knee replacement in the future. And now, for what you've been waiting for, for this whole video. What can you do to avoid an ACL tear? So here we are now in the gym, and I'm gonna show you some exercises that can help you 
to prevent an ACL tear. So just for the record, I've never torn my ACL. However, I've had about six knee surgeries, three on each knee, so I can empathize. The main goal of this training is to optimize your ability to decelerate and change direction in a manner that minimizes torsional force on the knee and maximizes performance. We can do this through the achievement of three main goals. One, develop single leg balance. Two, develop muscle strength. And three, develop single leg dynamic strength, better known as mobility. Calf raises can be used to develop calf strength. Make sure you use both the straight and the bent leg variants to develop both the soleus and the gastrocnemius. are an important tool to develop core strength and to help optimize trunk control when changing direction. Be sure to maintain the spinal alignment. Shrimp squats develop quadricep, gluteal, and hamstring strength. Touchdowns or step downs are also an awesome exercise. The alignment of the knee relative to the foot is of super importance. Make sure it is over the outside edge of the foot. Drive through the heel when standing up. Use balance exercises to develop and challenge core strength. Add drops from various heights to develop appropriate landing mechanics. When you land, you should be able to look down and see your big toe between your knees. To increase the drop height to add challenge. Always land in a controlled manner. Increased ankle dorsiflexion improves landing control. Progress to moving and landing laterally to increase difficulty level. Double leg landing before working on single leg landing. Add balance work and bare feet to develop proprioception skills. Use cone drills at reduced speed to practice control direction change. Increase speed as your control improves. Remember to stick each direction chain with the knee over the outside edge of the foot. Add single leg hops to the cone drills to increase difficulty level. Stick each landing with control. Double leg hops are great for developing strength and control for deceleration. Squats are an awesome dynamic strengthening modality. Use the whole range of motion to get the most from this movement. Crawling is an awesome exercise for core strength and lower extremity flexibility. The Running Man is an awesome exercise for developing gluteal strength. Buns of steel, here I come. I'm not gonna walk after this. Buns of steel. And finally, don't forget to add perturbation training to prepare you for unexpected circumstances. Other resources for exercises to prevent ACL tear include FIFA 11 Plus, the 11 Plus Kids, the Footy First program, and several others. Check the description down below for a link to comprehensive guide on this topic. So hopefully today I've given you the tools to help you avoid tearing your ACL. If you like the video, be sure to give us a big thumbs up, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho.